in black and white tonight. The inform Dane Beams joins us in the studio. Goes in and kicks a goal. Alan Didak is put under the pump in the build-up to game 200. Um, we're going to try and kick more goals, isn't it? Yeah, obviously, obviously work. Yeah, yeah, that pretty much works most weeks. Yeah. And Angry Birds. The Magpies plan to prevent the Eagles from flying high. Yes, welcome to In Black and White tonight. Hope you can stay with us right through the show, of course. Ahead of the big qualifying final against West Coast coming up at the MCG on Saturday. Time to say hello to two-time Copeland Trophy winner Paula Curia Licker. Big game this week, massive game, but a big week also with the All-Australian nominees named. Now, you've gone and picked your All-Australian team. I have, Chris. So I've put together uh, my side for, for the year and, and managed to squeeze in all the common players, which is great. Not a little biased at all? or No, not at all, mate. I, I thought uh, the players obviously highlighted there, the, the Magpie guys, and they've been fantastic all year with uh, Davis. Really turned his, his career around this year playing down back. Uh, ben Reid's had a great year, and obviously Penders in the middle. Travis Cloak, he's just been, he's been uh, tremendous up forward. And, uh, of course, Tomo and Swanee, uh, probably the leading midfielders of the competition. Well, look, it's hard to argue against it. It's a very good team. And a bit disappointed you didn't put Pendlebury in the pivot, perhaps push Juddy out to the wing. I was going to do it, but I thought I'd upset too many people. <laughs> so um, he's happy playing anyway, Penders. All right, don't forget our special guest, Dane Beams, coming up very, very shortly. But now with all the news from the Westpac Centre, it's Christy Malthouse. Hi, Christy. Hi, Michael. Well, Collingwood has made three changes to the team that lost to Geelong last week, with Heath Shaw, Nick Maxwell and Leon Davis returning to the side. The trio will bolster the all-important defence as Collingwood's 2011 finals campaign begins. Shaw is back after an eight-week enforced layoff, while Maxwell's broken thumb has now healed. Cameron Wood, Ben Sinclair and Alex Fasolo have made way. The Eagles have recalled Daniel Kerr and Will Schofield, replacing Ashley Smith and Patrick McGinnity. It's the Eagles' clearances that Collingwood is focus focusing on shutting down for Saturday afternoon's clash at the MCG. West Coast boasts one of the most dynamic ruck combinations in recent years and still side bottom says that breaking even in these contests will give the Pies a solid chance of earning a berth in the preliminary final. Well, yeah, they've obviously got a pretty good ruck duo with Cox and that, Nui, so um, you know, I think it all starts there in the midfield. So, um, you know, I've obviously got a, our ruckman and they'll, you know, I suppose not just them, but everyone will need to be on their game, obviously, to, you know, stop them too. But um, you know, I think everyone's just looking forward to the challenge and, um, you know, finals is finally here, so yeah, we're all pretty excited. Vice-captain Scott Pendlebury has revealed that while the 96-point loss to Geelong on Friday left the team shocked, their self-belief hasn't wavered. Pendlebury told our cameras that Mick Malthouse spoke to the players briefly after the match, reminding them they're still the same players who finished on the top of the ladder. After the game, it was, I suppose it was really brief because um, I suppose there was not a lot Mick could have said to, to change the mood. Everyone was um, a little bit shell-shocked, but at the same time, Mick said, you know, we are 20 and 2 for a reason. We are a good football side. We just got away from the things that make us a good football side. But, uh, you know, the mood's, the mood's really good at the football club and really looking forward to this week. I think we're all looking forward to it and they'll be back to their best <laughs> on Saturday, that's for sure. That's great. Thanks, Christy. Uh, Licker, big changes. Lots of speculation about Nick Maxwell. Uh, he's sure, of course, after, as Christy said, the eight week layoff. Mm -hmm. Leon Davis back as well. Three big ins and uh, some unlucky players too as we look at this Collingwood team. Cameron Wood left out, Alex Fasolo and Ben Sinclair all left out of the team. Yeah, look, obviously disappointing for those guys, but, yeah. but Chris O, you've got Maxwell, Shaw and, and Davis to come back in a side close to 500 games between them, the experience they add, and we all know uh, the tempo of finals football goes up, but I think it's great, you know, obviously Maxi, there's a question mark about him coming back, but his leadership, you just can't leave that out in this important time of the year. And a big job for Darren Jolly. He's really got to handle both Dean Cox and Nick Nat Nui, who have proved pretty much the, the, the best ruck combination in the competition this year. Yeah, they have. And, uh, you know, uh, Nat Nui obviously gets around a little bit. He's got great uh, agility, uh, not only obviously with his leap, but also once the ball hits the ground and Cox very strong. But Joel's, I know he hasn't been... Um, you know, probably hasn't been at his best over the last few weeks, but you just can't take away the strength he has around the footy and the amount of confidence that he gives uh, the on-ballers. Yeah, absolutely. So, a big job for Darren Jolly. But time now to introduce our very special guest, 
Collywood star Dane Beams. Dane, great that you could be on the show, mate. Uh, a big week coming up, particularly after the disappointment of last week. Yeah, as you mentioned earlier in the show, um, you know, we got a bit of a touch-up um, last Friday night against Geelong. And, you know, we were a bit embarrassed about the way we went about things. And, you know, it was pretty short and brief, as Penders was saying earlier. Um, Mick just sort of said, yeah, we're, we're a team, we're 20 and 2, we finished on top of the ladder and it's time to move on. We've got a important final coming up this week. So all the boys have been up and about this week and really looking forward to uh, coming out and making amends on Saturday. Beams, a little bit about yourself. Your form has been great over the last month. Tell us about the recovery. Um, I know you've you got an interesting rehab uh, story in Nepal. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I, I sort of uh, adopted when I had my foot. Um, I adopted a little program I do with myself. I, I'll get the 15 kilo uh, medicine ball and I, and I hold onto it and I walk um, 25 metres under, underneath the water. It's sort of now, it's just become sort of a little superstition of mine now. And, Every time I get in the pool now for rehab, I do that, and I uh, also swim about 20 laps as well. So, just little things that I've adopted now, and it's probably things that I weren't doing at the start of my career that I've, you know, I just pick up on now, and you know, I'm getting a kick doing it, so I'm just going to keep doing, <laughs> keep doing it. it. Well, since you've come back, you've averaged over 28 disposals a game in the last six weeks. So is do you, do you put that down to anything in particular? Is your role changed a little bit? No, not, not really. I, I'm spending a lot more time in the midfield um, the last six weeks. Um, I spent a lot of time up half forward and playing um, that high half forward role that we have. And I, I guess, as I was saying before, I, I was never really one for routine and I was never really one mm -hmm. for superstitions. And, and as, as I was watching the boys during the um, time I spent in the stands, you, you, know, you, grow, you grow a pretty strong hunger for you want to get back out there and play with your mates. And... Um, all the things that I've been doing while I was in rehab, I've just you know stuck to it, and mm -hmm. they're working for me at the moment. But it was great to see uh, He Shaw back in the side along with Maxi. Did you have uh, any doubt that the two of them would come straight back into the side? No, I personally I didn't have any doubt. You know, they're three of them with, with Davis as well coming back into the side. They're three of our best players, so um, to have Heath and, and Leon back, especially that they give us that drive off half back mm -hmm. and probably something that we lacked last week as well and and Maxi brings such good leadership for you know we've got a pretty young side still and to have his leadership and his experience out there um, definitely helps. Well Beamsy stick with us right through the show mate we'll get your thoughts on a whole range of issues coming up but we've added a new recruit to In Black and White now this is very interesting a series of supposedly in-depth feature interviews see what you think. Here we go Strawny uh, with Alan Didak. Dead how you doing mate? Yeah, good, Strawny. Good. Yeah. Welcome to Strawny O'Clock. Do you know why I call it Strawny O'Clock? Uh, no idea. Because I'm Strawny and... It's time. It's time. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. Well done. Now, Dids, you were born in a small village uh, in Croatia. Uh, what was the name of that little village? I was born in Adelaide. It is in Adelaide in Croatia. That's <laughs> nah, a nah. coincidence, isn't it? Now let's talk about those rumours involving uh, you and the Gold Coast Suns and, and, and GWS. Uh, there weren't any. Uh, why not? <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, Swanee and Pendles and Daisy took all the limelight. Yeah. But um, look, I signed last year, mate. And I want to be uh, a Collingwood man uh, for the rest of my life. And um, I suppose that those guys like the headlines and I don't. As uh, Mickey Malthouse ran through the game plan that Swanee came up with, no. Okay. No. Okay. This is the idea. Okay, that we buy 22 Nick Nat Nui wigs and we go out and we just freak him out. Okay, because we're all wearing the Nick Nat Nui dreadlocks bold look. Imagine Jared Blair in a Nick Nat Nui wig. They'd be going, oh, looks. Jared Blair's got Nick Nat Nui wig on. What's going on there? We win by 10 goals. Um. Yeah. I don't know if it would work or not, but. Ah. Um... Uh, well, don't worry about that, mate. No. Have you been uh, practicing the shimmy this week? No, I haven't. You haven't? No, hopefully, if we you know, make it to the grand final and I can kick a couple, I'll do it again. A little again. bit of a shimmy? I'll give it a bit of a shimmy. A bit of a shimmy from Strawny. And, uh, and at the after party as well. Yeah. Have you worked on anything new? Um, yeah, the, the, to try and get a kick. So we all love watching you play, and in a few years' time when you retire, you can come and play real football with Strawny at the Legends game. It's 200 games, you're a legend. Cheers, mate. Great Thank stuff. you. Ah, uh, yes, more of the Strawny interview on the Collingwood website with Alan Didak. Still to come on In Black and White tonight, Nathan Buckley on how to beat the West Coast Eagles and a finals flashback with Steel Sidebottom. But first, here's the President with his editorial.
Hello everybody, welcome to the Prisoner's Desk here on In Black and White tonight. Well, we've all recovered from uh, what was a very disappointing week last Friday night at the MCG. Fantastic in the turnout, over 85,000 people at the G. Shocking that we didn't turn up to play and the Cats then gave us our fair whack. We've learnt from that, no doubt, and we reload. Season 2011, 20 wins, 2 losses, you take that at the start of the year and the McClellan Trophy will be presented to me on Saturday afternoon at the MCG by the AFL Chief Executive Andrew Demetriou. It's a fantastic achievement by our coaching staff and players to be able to have won the McClellan Trophy for the second year in a row. How we recovered after the weekend? Well, we put it aside pretty quickly. We knew that uh, you know, going into the game we haven't played that well in the last games of seasons past but we're all ready to go this week. We actually had a uh, wonderful dinner on Monday night at the house of our Vice President, Alex Weislitz, and his wonderful wife, Eloise, who put on a fantastic dinner and barbecue for all the players and those in the inner sanctum. And while we're sitting there, a bloke crawled in over the top of the roof and in the back door. It was Bear Grylls, man versus wild. Well, at Collingwood, we know it's Collingwood versus everybody. And uh, Bear was fantastic in telling his story about how he recovered from a broken back to climb Everest. In many ways, it's something that we're going to have to do over the next seven days and then recover from getting our back broken last Friday night to getting out and climbing our Everest over the next month of football. Look, we're really confident. You don't win 20 games in an AFL home and away season by not being good enough. You don't come from winning the Premiership into the NAB Cup into this season without having great confidence in our structures and what our players can do. All we have to do this week is play at our best, get our team together, get our supporters together, and we'll be right and ready to go. All right, we get set. Saturday, MCG, 2.30, Pies against the West Coast Eagles. Be there and really get behind the Pies. There he is, the fighter president, as always. And Dane, Bear Grylls, did you meet him during the week? Yeah, he, he came to the, as he was saying there, the Alex Wiselet sort of function and... He did came he, there and eat he didn't eat any snakes or did he do anything? No, it was actually weird the way they introduced him. We were in the sort of the shed there and he, he came up and he was walking on the roof. And he comes through <laughs> and he climbed out through the back of the tent there. So it was interesting the way they set it up. But um, he, he, he had a really interesting story where he you know broke his back and came back and he climbed Mount Everest and he had a couple of really good stories. And I think one of the boys asked him what was the worst thing he ate and he. I think he said goat's testicles, but he had, he had some other interesting sort of uh, recipes there anyway. Ah, oh, sensational. All right, time now to hear from Nathan Buckley on the West Coast Eagles. Thanks, Chris O. Well, massive week this week for us. Uh, a game against the West Coast Eagles. Won their last game by 100 points. Won 11 of their last 12 games, so they're in form. They come across the MCG. They've only played the one game there this year, but... Um, and that was against us in round 10. Uh, but uh, we think they're a much better side than they were uh, at that stage of the year. So we're going to have our work cut out. As you can see, they've got quite a deep midfield, quite a deep uh, defensive unit. So they've, um, they've pressed very well against opposition during the year and we know and expect that that's going to happen again. One thing that we can highlight is, is the contested ball ability of their midfield. Shuey, Prittis, Selwood, Kerr, we expect that he'll be right to come into the side. Um, all of those guys in particular, very, uh, very hard-headed, uh, their ability to get in and under. Uh, Cox and Nat Nui, who have been a fantastic ruck combination for them. So um, the midfield battle is going to be pretty important. And of course, down forward, they've uh, Kennedy, their leading goal scorer. Lynch gets on the hit up uh, quite often. Lacroix, Nikoski, they've had great years. So. Um, centre forward, they're very dangerous, but uh, we understand that the, the biggest thing for us is going to be able to counter uh, their defensive press and their team structures, and um, you know, we're pretty uh, uh, adept at that as well. So it's going to be a bit of an arm wrestle. We're looking forward to it. Beamsy, Eagles, big game this week. Can you tell us a little bit about the finals and how much it, uh, it picks up as the tempo and the pace of the game? Yeah, well, I guess last year and the, and the year before, I was lucky enough to, you know, I've experienced six finals now. Um, and I'm looking through their list, I know there's a few blokes that haven't. So, but really, I, I think it's the, the tempo and the probably the outside expectation as well. You know, it, it, a lot of the people expect us to do really well, as, mm -hmm. and it's just the way the boys handle it. Um, I know we're we're better off for the runs last year that we had, and I know all the boys are really looking forward to it, and um, we're ready to get out there and have a real good crack at it. Well, it's going to be a big game. Now, Dane, one of the new innovations this year has been the subs, the super subs, if you like. Now, you haven't been 
a sub this year. There's been a lot of the boys that have, but just wanted to ask in terms of the impact that the subs are having when they came on the when they come on the ground. Jared Blair, we saw last week, get a lot of it. What's your impression of, of how it's all worked? Well, I guess it's um, comes out, comes down to what the coaches want to use it for. You know, whether it's to bring someone fresh on to have an impact, or as we've seen with Dids um, for a couple of weeks, he was coming back from an injury and they wanted to get ease his game time into it. Um, so. Yeah, for, for him, it was more getting let, run into his legs and then yeah. playing a full game. And then there's other instances like Blairy last week who came on and had an impact on the game. And So there's different ways you can look at it. Is it um, dreaded, the green jacket? <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, you don't want to be running out there in the white with the green jacket or getting the red jacket. <laughs> the way the time off, as well. I was going to say, Benji, do the players know about it before the game or is it something they just come to the G on Saturday and then they're told you're the sub for the day? Well, I think Mick tells you, you he, you'll have a, he'll have a fair idea whether it might be down to three blokes and then um, he'll tell you when you get to the game on Saturday, but I haven't had it yet, so um, I hope I don't ever get, get to uh, experience it, so, but I think that's the way it works. Yeah. All right, well, the super sub is the subject of this week's fan poll. Tweet who you think should be our substitute against the Eagles to hashtag IBAWT or log into the Collingwood Facebook page with your answer and one lucky fan will win a signed Collingwood footy. There you go, Jared Blair, Heath Shaw, Alan Didak, Tyson Goldsack or Andrew Cracker. Interesting choices. Uh, one of them, you would think, would be the substitute this week. And, of course, last week we asked you to nominate the two players who best displayed Collingwood's core value of excellence. Luke Ball and Scott Penelbury scored the bulk of the votes. And congratulations to Ryan Wood, who won the signed footy. So, uh, great work there with uh, Ryan. That's about right, isn't it? Oh, a little bit disappointed there in Daisy. I thought he's a lot more professional than 6%, Chris-O. Yeah, I agree. Mm. Yeah, mm. all right. All right, Licker, now, we were a bit disappointed last week because Bucks iced our, ma our main man, our comeback kid, Scotty Cummings. He was absolutely shattered. Well, I'm glad to report that Scotty's moved on and started a brand new career to take advantage of the stunning results he's achieved on the Gen for Men Match Fit campaign. Don't need Bucks anymore. A new career here. I'm playing footy for you, Bucks, whether you like it or not. Not coming back. That'll shatter him. I, the, probably the, the best thing about yeah. Gen for Men for me and, and Jenny Cray is the fact that they they change your life basically. They don't say, right, here's our products out in the supermarket, go buy them and you'll lose weight. They've actually taught me how much to eat, what to eat. If I do have something that's uh, not considered a healthy food, how long it's going to take me to exercise to get that off. Um, so the support from them is just phenomenal. First disappointment as a senior coach. Ah, uh, there you go. Great work from Scotty Cummings. Well, right through the final series, we'll be taking a look at memorable finals, finals flashback. Today, we hear from Steel Sidebottom. I'm Steel Sidebottom, and, uh, yeah, my football... Uh, final flashback is the 2009 semi-final against Adelaide. The last about five rounds of the home and away season, I was in the VFL and then um, was lucky enough to get picked for the first final against St Kilda. So um, yeah, it was definitely nerve-wracking nerve going to play any final. And that's a good mark, a good strong mark taken by Sidebottom, who has been pretty uh, good tonight. He stood up well, Sidebottom, young. Yeah, well, I didn't, you know, contribute on the scoreboard. You know, I did a little bit around the ground and. Um, I suppose played my part to yeah, get the boys out the line. Side bottom having an excellent game. Yeah, well, Tibbet kicked the goal with um, you know about a minute to go, I think it was, and um, yeah, it was obviously pretty disappointing at the time. But you know, I didn't think that we'd lost it, but um, yeah, it went through my head that you know it could be it. But um, yeah, we're well, lucky enough to get a quick clearance, the next ball up, and um, yeah, kick it down. And Jack, would, I suppose, is in the right spot and got the free kick. It's a hard free kick to come in. You know, he just went back and I was sort of on the goal line, so I had a perfect view of it and just watched it sail over my head. Yeah, what a game of footy that was. Uh, Dame, we're out of time, unfortunately, but, mate, we wish you all the best. It's going to be a big day Saturday. Yeah, it is, and hopefully all our supporters can get down there and support us, in which, um, you know, hopefully is a good four weeks for us. Uh, mate, uh, good luck. We wish you all the best. Licker, we're out of time, mate. Well done we on are, your All-Australian team. Thank you. Outstanding you, work from you. Are you happy with that? Very, very happy. We'll see you next week. Thanks, mate.
Hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, don't forget to cheer on Saturday. Big game, West Coast Eagles at the MCG. Goodbye.